जय हिंद एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर नितिशा श्रीवास्तव इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियरिंग अजय कुमार गर्ल इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद उत्तर प्रदेश इन इंडिया आई एम हियर टू प्रेजेंट टॉपिक वन ऑफ द टॉपिक इन द कंट्रोल सिस्टम दैट इज रूट लोकस रूट लोकस विल बी कवर्ड इन अ सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स वॉट इज द आउटलाइन ऑफ द root locus lecture series is first we will uh, understand the definition of root locus then uh, what do we mean by angle and magnitude criterion and uh, the basic properties involved in uh, plotting the root locus and some practice questions will be taken up so uh, what is root locus in control system it is basically a graphical method so as uh, root means here we are talking about the root of the characteristic equation and locus is the set of all points that share a property which results in a curve so this is how we are going to understand the stability and the transient response uh, through root locus <coughs> now uh, what is the outcome of the root locus lecture series it is that you will be able to understand the influence of uncertainties in a control system like if certain parameter is changing then uh, how would be the response of the system in terms of uh, uh, the transient response and the stability and understand the applications of root locus and also we will be able to apply root locus method to a given system so this is uh, what uh, uh, you will be able to do once you understand all the uh, methods to draw a root locus <clears throat> so as i said roots root we are talking about the characteristic equation and how do we define a root locus it is a graphical method in which the roots of the characteristic equation are plotted in s plane for different values of a parameter now consider this control system closed loop control system r of s is the input and cs is the output so k is a parameter which would be varying so what is the closed loop transfer function closed loop transfer function cs upon rs is kgs upon 1 plus kgs hs where here k is a changing parameter and what is the characteristic equation characteristic equation is 1 plus kgs hs now so what we mean by this locus the locus of the roots of the characteristic equation when the gain k is varied from 0 to infinity is called root locus that is this parameter we will be varying from 0 to infinity and looking at the uh, location of the graph on the s plane we will understand the stability and transient response of the system so the locus of the roots of the characteristic equation when gain is varied from 0 to infinity is called the root locus the changing parameter here is k so why root locus so as discussed like root locus is a graphical method uh, or it's a graphical representation plotted on a graph of the it's a graphical representation of the closed loop poles this is the closed loop transfer function cs upon rs which is k into gs 1 plus k gs hs so root locus <coughs> is a graphical representation of the closed loop poles as a system parameter is changing why it is a powerful method for analysis design analysis and design both for the stability and transient response of a 
control system. Why? Because the feedback control system are difficult to comprehend from a qualitative point of view and hence they rely heavily on mathematical and uh, uh, the interpretation of the equations. So, uh, why, uh, what is the ability of root locus? Now, up to this point, uh, the gains and other different parameters of the system uh, were changed or designed to yield a designed uh, response of mostly the first and the second order system. Even though root locus can be used to solve the same kind of problem, it is it's what real power lies in the ability to provide solutions for systems which are having order higher than 2. Okay. So, this is the uh, uh, where the root locus stands outstanding. Now, in this, uh, like what are the application areas as we talk about control system? Now, for example, uh, okay, an aircraft closed loop uh, roll anger controller uh, is designed to have the response time as one second and overshoot uh, should be around less than 15 percent. Now, if this is a uh, closed loop system uh, for this aircraft, now what happens uh, to the performance of the controller when the mass of the aircraft is changed, like it is not the same when the flight takes off or when it is landing, there is a change in the fuel, the fuel is consumed, therefore, one of the parameter keeps on changing with this. So, in this case, the changing parameter is the mass that is the fuel here. So, what happens to the system, whether the system will remain stable or uh, what would be the response till it would remain the same or not <coughs> is an example of the root locus method. One more example we can take is, now for example, you are requested to design a cruise speed controller for high speed train. Now, the mechanical team if requires your controller to be over damped <coughs> so that the acceleration, the traction is minimized. Now, what? If at all there is a change in the friction between the wheels and the rail which is changing due to heat or snow. So, whenever a control system is designed, there is a possibility that some parameter would keep on changing. So, instead of analyzing the or determining the stability for each time the parameter changes uh, and which is natural in a control system. So, what is the influence of pole locations in terms of stability? So, stability of a system depends as we know on the location of the roots of the characteristic equation in the S plane. So, if you have the roots, for example, if the roots of the characteristic equation are on the left half of the S plane, then the system is stable. And if the roots of the characteristic equation are on the right half of the S plane, then the system is unstable. So, for a system to be stable, the roots of the characteristic equation should not lie on the right half of the S plane or on the imaginary axis. For such roots lead to the instability or sustained oscillations of the system. So, what is root locus? It is a technique or the root lo locus technique is an approach to determine the location of the roots in the S plane given the open loop pole zero configuration. So, for a system, if the roots are, for example, these are certain roots which are on the real axis. So, this is the real axis, this is the imaginary axis and this is the real axis. If the roots are on the real axis, roots are real and distinct, then the system is over damped. But as soon as the location or the k parameter is varying and it reaches a breakaway point somewhere here, then that means that the system at that moment is critically damped. Okay? 
that is at this point the system is critically damped for example the locus moves in this way and it is uh, going to infinity so for this part of the duration the system is overdamped and at the breakaway point or the break in point the system is critically damped and the case where the system moves from or the parameter changes and the location of the roots till the imaginary axis is under damped the system is under damped and when the uh, gain is uh, where the value of gain when the location of the root locus is here it means that the system is having sustained oscillations so in this case it is overdamped in this case it is overdamped in this case critically damped and in the other case it is under damped whereas for the roots on the imaginary axis the system is undamped and of course this side it is unstable as can be seen here that is when zeta is greater than 1 and at this moment it is critically damped because the root locus is moving away from the uh, real axis <coughs> therefore the here when zeta is increasing here zeta becomes 0 here it will be under damped and at this moment undamped right the system is undamped so the root locus method the root loci method provides an alternative tool for analysis why to influence the to evaluate the influence of a parameter of interest k we would have to compute the location of poles for different values of k for example the mass of the aircraft is changing for each changing mass to determine the stability that is the transient response and the pole location of poles is not a correct approach so uh, we have the root locus method which gives us an alternative to determine the stability and the transient response of the system so as we uh, know uh, we will understand the two topics here that is the angle criterion and the magnitude criterion <coughs> the root locus is a graphical method in which the roots of the characteristic equation are plotted in s plane for different values of a parameter so this is the uh, transfer function of a closed loop system cs upon rs is equal to gs upon 1 plus gshs so the characteristic equation is 1 plus gshs the locus of the roots of the characteristic equation when gain is varied from 0 to infinity is called root locus. Okay. So, <clears throat> we will understand two things here. How do we know that the particular given root is lying on the root locus or not? Okay, So, that can be determined. So, the characteristic equation is 1 plus GSHS is equal to 0. Therefore, we can also write as GSHS is equal to minus 1, where GSHS is known as open loop transfer function or forward path uh, transfer function. And the roots of the characteristic equation are the closed loop poles of the system. This we need to understand that the roots what we are talking about of the characteristic equation are basically the closed loop poles of the system because this is a closed loop transfer function cs upon rs so it is the character the roots of the characteristic equation are basically the closed loop poles of the system so the roots of the characteristic equation occur only for those values where GSHS is equal to minus 1, right? Since S is a complex variable here, the equation GSHS is equal to minus 1 is converted into two conditions. Since uh, we are talking about that the roots of the characteristic equation occur only for those values of S where this condition is satisfied. And since S is complex, 
then the two conditions are angle criterion and the magnitude criterion since it is having an angle as well as a magnitude. So, let us see what do we mean by angle criterion in root locus. So, the characteristic equation is 1 plus GSHS equal to 0, GSHS is equal to minus 1. So, when we write it in the complex form, it is GSHS is equal to minus 1 plus J0. <clears throat> this GSHS is known as the open loop transfer function or the forward path transfer function. Now, where does, where does this 1 minus 1 plus J, J0 lie in the S plane? So, this is the <coughs> S plane. Now, where does this minus 1 plus J0 lie? So, this is the, this is the 0 and let us say that this point, uh, it's not 0. So, this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. So, let us say that minus 1 is lying here. So, what is the angle when at this point? It could be, the, this is 0, 90 degree, 0 degree, 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree, 360, then again 450, then 540, 630, 720 and so on. So, what are the angle possibilities here? Angle could be 180 degree, 240 degree or correspondingly if you take it this way, then this is <clears throat> 0 degree, minus 90, minus 180, minus 270, minus 360, minus 450, minus 540, minus 630 and minus 720 and so on. So, what is the possibility of the angles at this point? It is 180 degree, 240 degree and so on or also minus 180 degree and minus 540 degree and so on. So, as mentioned here, it is and so on. So, this could be the angle of GSHS. Therefore, the general formula for angle criterion is angle GSHS is equal to plus minus 180 degree, 2q plus 1, where q is 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. If q is 0, then it is plus minus 180 degree, then if q is 1 and q is 2, correspondingly the multiples increase. So, this is known as the angle condition for a root locus which must be satisfied. So, what is the magnitude criterion? Now, we know that GS1 plus GSHS is, is equal to 0. Therefore, the magnitude criterion is this. That is mod GSHS should be equal to 1. And again, GSHS is known as the open loop transfer function or the forward path transfer function. Now, let us see one example related to it. So, finally, what is the uh, point we have understood here. Therefore, a plot of the points in the complex plane satisfying the angle criterion is the root locus and the value of gain corresponding to a root that is a point on the root locus can be determined from the magnitude criterion. So, angle criterion can be used since the parameter k which we are talking about is changing with time. Therefore, uh, satisfying the magnitude criterion <coughs> and then knowing whether it is in the, uh, whether the given root is on the root locus or not. Instead, we will first satisfy, let check whether the angle criterion has been met and then if angle criterion is met, then we can find out the corresponding value of gain at that particular location using the magnitude criterion, right. So, this is a, a brief uh, way how you can find 
the value of the parameter k. Since this is what we are talking about, if a parameter is continuously changing with time, whether the system, okay, now let us see that how can we find the value of that changing parameter k. So, as we know that this is the closed loop transfer function Cs upon Rs which is Kgs upon 1 plus Kgs Hs and this is the characteristic equation as we are talking about because that is the uh, where we get to know the poles of a closed loop system. <coughs> With the help of angle condition one can first check whether the given point is lying on the root locus or not and then magnitude condition is used to find the value of k at a given point. So, as we know this is the angle condition, this is the formula to find the angle condition and this is the formula to find the magnitude at that particular point. Let us say we have a transfer function GSHS is equal to k upon s into s plus 6. Now, whether this point s is equal to minus 3 plus j2 is lying on the root locus or not, so that can be checked using the angle criterion. Now, let us, let us substitute s in this. So, this will be k divided by minus 3 plus j2 into minus 3 plus j2 plus 6. So, this will be k upon minus 3 plus j2 and this is 3 plus j2. So, what is the angle here? <clears throat> angle of minus 3 plus j2 since it is in the second quadrant. So, angle will be 180 degree minus tan inverse b by a that is 2 by 3 and angle of angle of 3 plus j2 will be tan inverse 2 by 3. So, tan inverse 2 by 3 is 33.69 degrees and when you subtract this, you will get it as 146.31 degrees. So, here it is <coughs> k divided by that is uh, 146.31 degrees plus 33.69 degrees. So, sum of this angle is nothing but 180 degree that is 180 degree and therefore <coughs> when you take up it is 180 that means we have assured that this point lies on the root locus since its value is coming out to be minus 180 degrees okay now what is the value of the parameter k at this point so that can be determined by using the angle condition so let us see <coughs> what it will be uh, this uh, we are going to use the magnitude here we can do it here only so what is the magnitude it is uh, magnitude will be right gs hs is equal to by k so this will be <coughs> uh, what is the magnitude magnitude would be uh, uh, 1 divided by root of, we are talking about this equation, 3 square plus 2 square root of 3 square plus 2 square. So, this will come out to be 1 divided by root uh, 13 into root 13 which is equal to 1 by 13. Therefore, the corresponding value of k is 13. So, this is how you can determine the parameter k once checking the uh, angle condition. If it satisfies, then the corresponding value of the gain parameter k can be satisfied. So, in the next lecture, we will cover the 
basic properties of the root locus thank you very much